just like that. Before you know it, back again. However, it's not crypto after dark. It's not crypto before dark. It's crypto after dark. Good to see everybody. Carolina Keith here. Just Keith, Professor Keith, Keith the Simp, whatever you want to call me. I'm not a real professor. I just play one on the internet. Good to see everybody back on a Thursday. Got a whole hour tonight. Going to crunch some numbers and look at some charts. Hope everybody's mentally ready for that mess. So, real quick, let's go put this on Twitter first. I was in the middle of that, but the intro ran out because it's not as long as it should be. Uh, live now. Blow. So, if you haven't done so, everybody, please. Go hit the like button, bro. There's 20 y'all in here, 17 likes. That's awesome. Let's get that down to 20 and 20 or up to 20 and 20. The more likes we get, the more YouTube pushes us up to the top, and then they, they share it for us, which is pretty darn cool. They share it for us, and then more people will come watch. It's pretty dope, right? I think it's pretty cool. Um, here's the link for everyone. If you want to, go send this out to the old interwebs everywhere. Uh, if you got Instagram or twatter or tiktok or whatever it is shoot the link out there and then come watch too we'll be on here for a whole hour we're going to talk about this horrible setup here on ethereum that i just simply can't deny and not only is it on ethereum it's on some other stuff too i'm going to talk about this and some other charts and some very bearish setups and some very bearish <sighs> some very bearish really really ugly looking potential setups i don't want this stuff to happen but gosh i can't deny it i just can't i don't want it to be true but i must own it when it is and i must open up every possibility i can't be the guy who bullshits it I'm sorry folks it just ain't me um and i'm happy to hear other people's opinion especially our admins when they talk and they speak i like to shut up and listen because i trust what they say those guys are very smart all the admins from the Discord is what I'm talking about. The Discord link is right here in the bottom. You still got Launch Pass free for six more days here, uh, which gets you full access on the Discord. The Discord itself is already free. You can get in on the general chat. We talk about whatever we want to talk about on there. Knock yourself out. But the full Discord's opened up with the Launch Pass subscription. Who all's in here? Let's go say hi real quick to everybody. Hi. <laughs> What's up, Frog with a hat, bro? Are we done Paul Wallen yet, bro? It's about to get bad. I'm just saying. We're going to talk about it tonight. Uh, and just like that, it's Thursday again. I know, right, dude? Just had a one-on-one -on -one consult, and it went by really, really fast, too, which tells me that I've been busy lately, and time's moving faster than I want it to, and I'm trying to slow down. Last night, I had some insomnia, and we'll talk about it here in a minute, and I want to explain what I mean. Uh, Angel Ponce, what's up, bro? Haven't seen you in a minute. Good to see you, brother. I would give you a round of applause, but my damn soundboard froze up. And I got to reset that bitch, too. Just super annoying. After the stream's over and we have our consult and we have our Zoom call, on work, I'm going to disconnect this stuff and let the battery run out and reset it. This happens every so often. It's made in China. What do you expect? Um, Ron Poti, good to see you, brother. Uh, Rick Crypto Ricardo, what's up, dude? Bonjour and good day. Uh, je suis la jeune fille. I speak a little bit of French, bro. Come on. Uh, Ron Poti, what's up? Um jinxy dude that's a cool name what's up dude good to see you alvin what's up brother good to see you g funkadillion bro that's a name let's go uh hi all like button engaged that's awesome dude uh jinx said currently in the hospital after an op 4 a.m uk dude i'm sorry bro prayers up i don't like to hear anybody getting any any surgeries done i never want to hear people going on a knife feel for you brother thomas guy you what's up bro good to see you jag what's up my man frank Good to see you, brother. Jeremy says, hello, folks. What's up, Jeremy? Go and hang out with him tomorrow. Mateo, what's up, dude? Gold champ. Good to see you. Liam. Um, Jeremy Munro, buenos atados. He's not even drunk yet. He will be here in a little while on Zoom, though. Watch. Um, electric motherfucking Ken. Good to see you, Ken. Ken's been hella busy. He's got a lot going on in his life, career change and all that mess. Hey, everybody's got stuff going on. You don't got to tell me. I fully get it. One of the longtime admins. Hung out with him in Vegas. He's a slow driver. You think someone who drives a Lambo would be driving fast? Nope. Mm -mm. Him and John, mm -mm. they're going to put that shit in slow motion. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time, Ken. We was all going fast. Uh, and the show begins, he says. Um, Louis Sounds, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Rope a dope, awesome name. Rugsy, what's up? Dude, been talking to him in the background a little bit on the DMs. If people DM me on Discord, I tend to get back to you, okay? Not everybody. I'm sorry. I'm busy. I know that. I'm sorry. 
Uh, and if you DM me on Twitter, I probably won't get back to you. That place is a cesspool. However, I can't deny the fact that there's a lot of people there. Um, I will put it on Twitter as well. Tom the Mailman. That's a dope name. Let's go. Um, that's cool, Zell. Shep Stacks, what's up? Good to see you. Jerome Ashton, Terry Brennan, Kayasin. Kayasin. Oh, that's Polo. What's up, bro? Good to see you, bro. We just said uh, we just chopped it up for about an hour. He's a cool dude. Psy Crypto Psycho, what's up, dude? Good to see you. Scythe, Digital Dingo, what's up, dude? Insomnia is real as a motherfucker, bro. You ain't got to tell me. I've had insomnia since I was 12, and last night it hit hard. Like, it hit hard. I was just thinking, and scenarios are going over in my head, and I'm thinking about... <sighs> we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, J.D. Harris, what's up? Keith just said French. I man the young girl, bro. That's awesome that I said that, which was just suis la jeune fille. I don't know how I know that. I just know it, okay? And it was from elementary school. And why I remember that part, I don't know. But it's hilarious that I said that, dude. I need to get a shirt now made that made that says that shit. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a good stream. You can tell already. Uh, Nudge, what's up, dude? Scott Holman, Ralph Wyback, good to see you. Uh, let's see, Big Dex, what's up, my man? Um, Darth was in my way. He's used to the Prius and Cal. <laughs> Jeremy said 175 because that's how hard he got that gold Lambo up to. Man, that shit was fun, dude. I want to do it again. Uh, I nearly shit my pants, he said. <laughs> Blue D O double G, what's up, my friend? All right, let's get into this. So, first and foremost, let's just start with this. Okay, last night I had a bout of insomnia. Why did I have a bout of insomnia? Well, got to thinking, and I noticed how bearish these charts are looking after I talked to Terry and John and Frank and Ken and... Tony and Jeremy sat there talked. And I was like, dude, shit does look bearish, you know? I'm going to short this, and I'm going to make money. That's not the problem. The problem isn't that I'm making money. Do you remember that part of the movie in the big short where Brad Pitt turns and looks at the dudes who are celebrating that they just closed the deal, and they closed the deal to short the market? He turns around and looks at him and says, stop being dickheads. You're celebrating that people are about to lose their lives. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, every time this happens, 30,000 people or whatever are going to commit suicide because they lost their house and their job and everything, right? The market looks really bad. And I don't know that it'll be as bad as that. That's not the point. The point is I realize a lot of people who hold or hodl are about to lose a shit ton of money. And you're going to get smoked. And because of that, I don't want to see that happen, okay? I don't want to see that happen. I know it's going to because people aren't going to listen to me and I don't expect everyone to listen. But I know people are going to lose a lot of money and people are going to lose a lot of faith. And psychologically, that's going to break a bunch of people, okay? I don't want to see anybody get broken. I really don't. I don't want to see anybody get killed by this market. I don't want to see anybody do anything crazy and dumb like that. It's just money. You can always make more. It's not worth all that. It's not worth the stress or the heartache. So please... Don't do anything stupid. If you need somebody to talk to, just hit me up. Tag me in the Discord and ask me to DM you, and I will. Okay? I have no problem sitting and talking to anybody. I really don't. It's my job to do this. This is my job now. Okay? I come on here and I talk to you guys. I trade for a living. Make some money passively if I can. That's it. That's it. That's my job. And if people need help, that's what I'm here for. If, you, if you're going through a hard time, you're having a hard time, and shit's hit the fan, and you're worried, and you're scared, dude, give me a holler. I can talk about it, okay? You don't got to go crazy. You don't got to do anything stupid. Please, please be smart, be thoughtful, and let's not be dickheads. I say this in one-on-one -on -one consults all the time. This is a shark pull, and it's a really mean shark pull, okay? In, it's, it sucks to say. This is a really, really mean shark pool, what, what, what is crypto. In this shark pool, you can be two things. You can be a shark and have sandpaper skin and you can eat. Or you can be shark food and have scales and get eaten. I don't mean you need to be a great white or a bull shark or a tiger shark or a jerk and kill everything and eat everything. That's not necessary. You can be a lemon shark or a nerf shark or a surf shark and just get little nibbles and take some bites. You don't have to be a dickhead 
and ruin everything, right? So don't. But please understand you better have sandpaper skin because if you don't, you're going to get eaten. I don't want to see anybody have that happen to them. So please, please be smart with what you're doing. Please take heed to the lessons we do on charts. I don't ask that you sell. I don't ask that you buy. I ask that you do this on your own and don't take financial advice from people who don't know what they're talking about. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm working on macro. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving financial advice. I'm just telling you to do your own charting and make your own decisions and don't let other people influence you, okay? Please. Now, that's why I had all that insomnia because I was stressing on this shit, realizing, man, I'm, I'm going to make a lot of money here, but people are going to get smoked. I don't want to see that happen. So please, please be smart. Now, let's go over this really gnarly looking chart. You cannot deny that this weekly chart is making a really, really ugly head and shoulders pattern. What is a head and shoulders pattern? A head and shoulders pattern is fairly simple. You see, head and two shoulders. It's very, very simple. Head, two shoulders. Very simple. In order for a head and shoulders to be validated, there needs to be a defined neckline, which will be a support and resistance line, which is what you see right here. It was support because price was over it. It has fallen under right here. Once price fell under this line, it became a neckline and resistance. Once price fell, it went to the next available support, which further validates the head and shoulders. After that happens, you get a bearish retest of said neckline, which is exactly what's happening right here. A neckline retest. It literally came back up and tested that resistance line one more time, immediately had a bearish engulfing candle, what is a bearish engulfing candle? That's when a red candle completely engulfs the green candle before it or up to 75%. This was way more than 75%. It was more like 130%. Completely invalidated that mini little, mini little move you had right there, which was nothing but a bear flag. And now we've began the really, really arduous task of watching this thing tumble into despair. I don't want to see that happen, but... Honestly, it looks like that's what's going to happen. Now, it may take a, th a few weeks to play out here. We may have a few weeks or a month or two months before it really, really gets gnarly. But I'll be honest with you, September's historically been bad. If historically been bad, September comes up in literally six days. What am I expecting to happen here? Well, I expect this to get gnarly. I'm going to plan for it to get gnarly. In fact, I've already entered a short. So I'm betting on this to go down, and I'm going to get paid to do so. I say this all the time. Rule number four is take profits. If you don't take profits, I'll take your profits for you. I would much prefer if we took profits together, okay? We come together and take profits together. But I can't make you do that. I can't make you do that. What I can ask you to do is do it. I can't make you do anything, and I'm not going to make you. But just to understand, if you don't, I'm going to, and I'm going to do it without you. This thing's going to fall. In fact, it's likely to fall to the next support, which is around 1,200. Nice round flat number. From there, what happens? Well, we can pull fibs on that and see. Let's go back here on the weekly real quick before I do anything else and pull some fibs. Let's use this neckline wick set right here, which is right here, and pull to the top. Just a couple quick little checks from the bottom to the top right here, from the bottom to the top. You see that we bounced on the 50 and failed. We hit the golden pocket, blew through it, blew through Sniper's Alley, and came all the way down here to 1618. Perfect. That's a perfectly valid bounce after hitting your take profit line. I mean, it really couldn't get much more perfect than that. So that was a good time to accumulate and try. Nothing wrong with that. Let's do it in the opposite direction now, from that same stopping point earlier to our new bottom, quote, unquote. Right? Bam. And now we see that we've broken through 236 and 382. And we did a bearish retest of the 50 fib on the bottom. This is called the continuation fib for a reason, folks. Zoom on in on him, this bitch and let you see it. That's not good. That's the 50 fib. And when you bounce on the 50 fib on the bottom, that's a bearish retest and more downtrend is to come. 
Well, let's use that as our new stopping point because it clearly looks like a stopping point. We cannot deny this. Let's remove our denial and remove our emotions and see it for what it is. Now, we're dancing around the 236 line as we speak. If this line does not hold and move back up past 2034, it is invalidated and will fall back down to 1478, 1339, and the golden pocket right here at 6186871 that Ethereum happens to like. I expect this to retest this golden pocket. It could bounce on this 50 fib at 1339. I kind of expect it to do so. But I do also expect that it comes down here and tests this golden pocket. If it cannot hold that golden pocket, things get really, really bad from here. And I'll explain. Let's take a step back and pull an all-time trend line here, shall we? All right, here. Pull a little trend line. I don't have all the chart on this one. Let's go to a different Ethereum chart and get all the data. There we go. Well, sorry, erase that. Here's all the data on Ethereum. <sighs> Same thing here. Let's do it again. From the bottom to the top here. Mm. Golden pocket, like I just showed you. If it does not hold this golden pocket, where this historical white trend line is that you see, if it does not hold that and breaks under that, listen, it's triple digits. Very, very simple, folks. It's triple digits. Now, is that to say that's going to happen? No. No. It can just stop here at that first white arrow, which is around $1,200. I would much prefer if it stopped at $1,200. Great, we can play it from there. If it breaks below that, it's going down to triple digits. Where is it gonna stop? Likely a thousand bucks first, and then after a thousand bucks and it does a bearish retest. What do I mean by a bearish retest? I'll show you. It breaks down, goes back up, bearish retest, and we get more of this. And we travel down to the next lowest support because this is a historical chart you can see all the support here where is the strongest support we know for a fact that ethereum prefers the golden pocket that's way down here at four hundred dollars to two hundred and seventy seven dollars well that sounds really really bad doesn't it i know that and i understand that that sounds bad but i need you to understand it's a full-on possibility in this instance, that would be somewhere around $10,000 Bitcoin, wouldn't it? Got to admit, that would be the case. Either way, regardless of what Bitcoin doing, this is Ethereum we're talking about, and this chart doesn't lie. It doesn't lie. People are holding right now, praying that this merge that's about to happen is going to make the price magically go up. I think you better be careful. Chart, look down. Sorry chart looks down. I wish it was different, but it isn't. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. That's my Ethereum take for the evening, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sucks to hear that, but I can't deny it, okay? Similar situation for Bitcoin here. I expected this to come up here and close this gap. It hasn't yet. I still expect it to eventually do so. I think it's getting to the point where it may not do it until the next bull run. Next bull run is going to happen until sometime 2023, 2024. You may have a pre-bull run run up like it's happened in the past, but that time ain't now. Right now, we're sitting under the 50 fib on the daily, dancing around doing a bunch of nothing. If it cannot get over 21,650, which is roughly 21,750, if it can't get over that, we're coming back down here to 20,000. Sorry. If we can't get over 20,000, things are going to get messy. Let's pull up the all-time Bitcoin chart and show you what I'm talking about. It has never failed this historic trend line before. Never in the history of Bitcoin has it failed this historic trend line. As you see, it's rode it for years. 
If that happens, it would be a failure of this historic trend line. What does that mean for crypto? I don't know. But a down sure don't sound good, does it? Mm -mm, it don't sound good. I'm hopeful that this bounces around and rides up. I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to get this same little fiddle fart around and we're going to get some pull down here. Maybe gnarly and it may suck for a while. And we may end up getting bearish retests over here way out in December or something like that where it comes up and retests the bottom of these trend lines. That's fully possible. But it's looking more bearish by the day. It really is. Until this thing improves drastically, I can't do anything bullish here. I just can't. It's making bear flag after bear flag and lower high after lower high and lower low after lower low. And all this is very bearish. And I'm sorry. It's just the facts. Let's go have a look at total market cap. One more thing before we get in all the other charts. I'm going to look at all the charts we can tonight. First, I want to get all this stuff out. All right. So, similar situation here on total market cap. Big red line. You haven't broken. That's the trend line for the all-time trend. It's clearly going down. Clearly not even close to it yet. So, nothing crossing this line is bullish until it does. And clearly, it's going to be a minute. All the indicators are already just ranging sideways and down, not up. Even up right here would be minimal. It hit resistance and immediately failed it. Now it's falling under more resistance. In fact, weekly resistance. If it doesn't hold this level, it's going to tumble. Three levels for it to tumble to. 847 billion, 725 billion, and 550 billion. That's from three trillion to 500 billion. That's a big drop, isn't it, folks? 70% as a matter of fact, which isn't too bad. Let it happen, right? Part of the deal, we can't do anything about it. Just relax and breathe. Nothing you can do about it. So chill, chill. Nothing's up, nothing you can do. Let it happen and play the ball as it lies. Daily-wise, clearly under the trend line on market cap. Hasn't broken that, and until it does, still bearish. This looks like it's coming down to me. Everything here, range-wise, is pointing down. Yes, you may get some short-term up here and there, but everything's pointing down. And because of that, I can't justify buying anything or trying to long anything. Even if some charts look good, most look bad. Let's have a look at stable coins. They have broken trends. Uh-oh. They've broken trends and formed bull flags on top of trend lines. USDC. Similar situation. We can draw another line here. That's just one of them. And pull this line kind of down through here somewhere like that. You can kind of see it's doing a similar situation, forming a little bit of a bull flag on a more overall bull flag, just begging to get going again. You could almost argue that this is just one big massive cup and handle that's still rocking and rolling, still riding that white trend line up, and dominance may continue to pour into stable coins. So look at the dollar index. In case you don't know about the dollar index, folks, there's a good correlation right now with dollar movement to crypto loss. As the dollar goes up, crypto market cap continues to come down. Basically, people are moving out of crypto and into traditional equities or in dollars, right? Why be in something else if that's going to go up and crypto is going to go down? It's a pretty smart play. Think about it. In September, the government is supposed to drastically reduce the amount of money in circulation. When you remove money from circulation, you increase the value of it. That's supply and demand 101, okay? Are they going to do it? Eh, the chart kind of says, yeah, they very well may. It's hanging out in the Sniper's Alley right now, which is slightly up under one of the take profit lines at 109. There's one more up there at 112. It looks like this thing's going to trend up there and hit that next line at 112. When? Eh, like I said, it may take a few days or a week, maybe sometime in September. But it looks like it's going to happen. In fact, if you pull another Fibonacci retracement here on this little short move right here, you get confluence to this area with this second Fibonacci set also pointing up there to 112. Not great, folks. <laughs> Not great. Not only is this happening to crypto, I don't want you to think it's something where it's not. It's happening market-wide. 
The euro is getting crushed. The Great British Pound is getting crushed. The Japanese yen getting crushed. Chinese RMB getting crushed. The Indian rupee is getting crushed. Okay? It's not just crypto. That's a lot of stuff. We've already talked about China and how a lot of really dicey things are going over in China. They're losing a lot of money. Hand over fist, as a matter of fact, and they're bleeding. Do I think they're going to go to war because of that? No. As a matter of fact, I think that's the wrong thing to do. I think they have a lot of stuff to correct. And like we always see with communism or socialism, it fails. Communism light is socialism. It's failing. It always fails. Never once has a society successfully ran for an extended period of time where either communism or socialism reigned supreme. You must introduce free market capitalism. You must introduce traditional values. Otherwise, you'll fail. Ask Rome. Okay, what else do I need to know about Rome? They were the same damn way. Socialism fails. Just the way it is. Now, all that being said, let's be smart here, okay? Let's not do anything stupid. While we're at it, we're going to get to some charts here now. Halfway done already. Let's go say hey to everyone else who came in. we got 76 people on, 45 likes. Everybody go hit like. Please go hit like. The more we get, the higher up algorithms push us up on the totem pole on the old algorithm for YouTubes. It likes likes. Right? The more likes, the higher up YouTube pushes us. It's just the way it is. So who else came in here? All right, so I see some charts over here already. If you guys have a chart you want to look at, go ahead and post it over here in the chat. Don't be shy, everyone. Come in and talk and say hi. Post some, picture, post some pictures. Post the chart that you'd like to look at. We'll try to find it. We'll look at it. We'll chart it up and see whether it looks good or bad. That's what we do here. We do data analysis. Um, let's see. Damn. A lot of people are in here. Let's go. Uh... <laughs> Tom Padaza, what's up? Pa Paz Dureka. I can't really say that. Good job. Thank you, brother. Danny Deep Pockets, what's up, my friend? Educated Dummy said, damn, I'm late, but it's all good. Nasty Nate. Let's go, bro. What's up? Digital Dingo, I had a traumatic brain injury at four. I hear you loud and clear on the insomnia front, brother. Yeah, you get it. Raging Beagle, bro, I hadn't seen you in a minute. What's up, dude? Good to see you. Um, If you get time, can you run over the algo chart? Absolutely, we can. So algo, P-T-I-X, I saw that. That was what Ken posted. Um, Darcy, what's up? Uh, Frank, Frank says, not financial advice. You're damn right it's not. Uh, something that has helped me a lot with my mental health is getting a dog. Yeah, bro, we have a dog. Uh, we have a golden doodle. Um, she's a goofball. Her name's Jolene, like Reba McIntyre, Jolene. Um, she's sweet as sugar. She just j jumps up in your lap and lays on you like she's a lap dog, only she's 80 pounds. Um, but, yeah, having a dog helps. She lays right here at my feet under the desk. And lays on my feet while I'm in here working. It's amazing how dogs are. They are endless love. It's crazy. Um, Ignacio Lopez, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Jehovah's Thickness, what's up, my friend? Bitcoin must have extreme dandruff with all that head and shoulders. It's a soap joke. <laughs> That's pretty good, dude. Um, a gooseneck line, bro. Three heels in a gooseneck. Don't you dare, Frank. Don't you dare. <laughs> That's an old school joke right there. By the way, I'd love to talk to some of those guys. I miss people. You know what I mean? I don't like losing people. I know people get mad or they don't like me or they think I'm arrogant or a dick or whatever. It's not the case. Any one of these guys who know me in real life know that's not the case. But I get it because it's the internet. You really don't know people. I'd love to talk to those guys. I hate how things ended. I don't like when things end like that. I have no control over that. But, you know, that's just the way the life goes, right? Crypto Psycho, 1600 to 1200 Should we throw a big chunk of money at this? Like I said, I showed you where I was going to do that. I'm... Not satisfied until I see some confirmation. I'm not really going to buy anything unless it goes down there to 400 or 200. I might take a stab at that. Okay. But otherwise, I'm going to need some confirmation first. That's just the way I am. I'm risk adverse and I need more confirmation. I'm just risk adverse. Um, we, were really just, we were just looking at that, Ken. Yep. Uh, now, what he's saying about 0.5 on the number of charts right now. Yet, remember, Keith will never tell you what to throw money at. He's simply here to show us charts. You got it right, brother. I'm not going to tell you where to put your money. Um, correct, Frank. Yeah, most of the charts looked at a 50 fibs and failed. Yep. Eat this however, bouncing off S1 weekly. Absolutely it is. <coughs> Problem is it's been bouncing off of it, and I don't know if it's going to hold it. I'm just, I'm just giving you the options. It's more bearish than bullish is my problem. Um, 
higher lows and lower lows. Yep, you got it, bro. Certified downtrend. 10K to 12K target for BTC. Swing short, open 25K. Agreed. Um, what's up, Nick? Good to see you, brother. I'm sure it's playing with that trend more than the previous tap and go. Yeah, I'm a little worried it's going to get worse, though. Um, TRB, got you. We'll look at that one. You guys have been talking about TRB over in the Discord. If you're not over in the Discord, you should be. Here's our Discord. It's full of stuff. Uh, it's got charts everywhere. It's got general chat right here where everyone comes and hangs out. Uh, another scammer account, bro. Yep, that's a scammer account. Let me just tell them for you. Yep. Scammer. Ask him for nudes. That's the way you get rid of scammers. Just ask them for nudes. Anyway, we have our uh, general chat. We have tons and tons of other places. You've got educational information where we have all of our different books for reading, all the kinds of things you can download, candlestick patterns, Fibonacci retracement, support and resist, risk management videos for your portfolios, instructional videos that help you help you along the way in case you're a visual learner. We have 786 chat, which is our $8 members, $16 members in the unlimited chat, my signals that I put right there in the unlimited chat, unlimited entries key of my portfolio is right there. Everything I do, Nick, Tony, Ken, Frank, Matt, all have their own sections where they can talk about anything they'd like to talk about. We have a nodes chat, Dow chat, minor chat, gaming chat, business chat, real estate chat. It goes on and on, and that's just part. Then you've got chart sections, tons of chart sections. Perhaps you'd just like to do crypto. We have just crypto. Maybe you're into bots. We recently did this. We have a bots general, custom bots, and a pine script Python chat just for you guys who like to do pine script coding. We have a whole section just for you. Okay, Tons of stuff over on our Discord. It's free till the end of August. What are you waiting on? The, the link's in the bottom of the video. Knock yourself out. It's free until August. My gosh, people, what are you doing? All right. Sphere and our deck screener. Okay. Sphere. I'll look at that one. Stay away from Mellow Yellow Whiskey. Nasty. Not even $15 a bottle. Ooh. Dot. Got you. Um, CRV and Soul. CRV and Solana. Um, SH, it's an inverse XMP index. Oh, thank you, Scott. SH index. Um, Luna C. I don't know why anyone wants to buy that, but I will look at it. Don't be a sucker, bro. Um, what's the preferred platform for shorts? Are you using DeFi platforms? No, I, I use KuCoin. That's just mine. You can also use MXC uh, or Binance if you have Binance. I don't have Binance. Uh, Adam, got you. Hey, what's up, uh, Adam, man? Good to see you, brother. I, prefer, I guess that's why you want to know about Adam. <laughs> yeah, we look at it. It's been performing really well. Uh, finally over Rona. You scared it away too now? Yeah, bro. I finally got. I finally kicked it. I finally kicked it. Yep, USDC and USDT we've already done. Those have broken trend and have bull flags forming. Um, Link and CRV. Link, I already got CRV up there, but we can do Link. Absolutely. Um, For bots, I know you need deep pockets. What would you need to keep topping them up and when they get stuck? Yeah, it's honestly best to not run bots in a downtrend. You should wait for an uptrend or sideways. They work much better then. However, there is a bot that we're currently working on. Another guy on the Discord, I hate to miss, miss credit, uh, Doctor Who over in the Discord has created a bot that works pretty darn well even in downtrends. Um, it's not fully tested yet, but it's been working pretty well in downtrends. It made something out of nothing, which is pretty cool. Um, you can start them for as little as 500 bucks. You're just not going to make a lot. Okay. Um, the more you put in, the more you'll do better. But again, it, it's really dependent on your risk level. Um, investing in case of bruise. The weather has been in the hundreds this whole month. Yeah, dude, that sucks. Where's Tony? Um, I don't know, bro. He's been busy. He talked to me last night. Again, when I'm not feeling so well or I'm getting mentally stressed out, uh, I usually go to my admins and I start talking to them because, uh, dude, those are my friends. It's as simple as that. That's who you lean on when you need help, right? You go to your friends. And those are my friends, so that's what I talk to. Um, Chai Tu, I'm not going to say that last name. You're not suckering me into that one. What's up, King? Good to see you, brother. I miss Binance. Yeah, me too, dude. Roar token. Uh, I'm not, I'm not crying this shit. Roar. Okay. Uh, R-O-A-R. -R. Did I miss any? Um, what's up, Ignacio Cervantes? Keith won't tell you how to invest. Lies. Keith will tell you to invest. Invest in increasing your knowledge base. You got it, Liam. That's it. That's all I'm going to tell you to do. Increasing your brain size. Did Keith just say Reba McIntyre's Jolene? 
Oh, shit. My bad. It is Dolly. I said, God, what an idiot, Keith. My bad. My bad. Living a couple hours from Dollywood, I should have knew that. My fault. Just Reba pops in my head automatically because of fancy. All right. But I know it's Dolly Parton. My fault. So let's do Algorand first. Someone ask about Algorand. All right, similar situation as Bitcoin and Ethereum. This isn't a high time frame accumulation zone. However, I'm going to warn you, it's a downtrend. And until it breaks the downtrend, the accumulation is not really taken off. This is under the trend. And until this thing breaks back over this trend line, trouble. Algorand, in my opinion, looks more down. Let's have a look at the fibs from the bottom to the top here. Sitting right in the golden pocket, dancing around right now on top of Sniper's Alley. It honestly looks a little sideways, but if it can't break this trend line, it's coming back down more. Uh, where are the levels that I think it could fall to? Well, let's have a dander at that. Algorand is one of these that didn't fall as far as some others, and it fell pretty damn far. Let's look and see. Yeah, so this trend already almost went all the way to take profit. 25 and a half cent would be good support for Algorand. But gosh, it could go farther than that. It has absolutely gotten hammered in this downtrend. Look at it. Just, God damn it. Look at that. Just death spiral down. And until that improves, uh, sorry, I can't do anything with it. Can't do anything with it. Also, you're going to notice that all of your moving averages are balled up over top of the price. It has so much work to do just to get back to where it was. That's bad luck. It's a bad luck. So, for me, it's a no on Algorand. Solana. Um, there you go. Similar situation for Solana. Almost the exact same setup. Lower high and lower low. It's forming a downward wedge. This is going to fall more. And when it falls more, where is it going to stop? Well, let's pull up some fibs. Let's put some pivots in here too. Why not? Uh, so we're under the pivot. We're on support one, S1. If it fails, S2 is down here at 71 um, and in the golden pocket right above Sniper's Alley. So I would say $29, $30 is a decent target for Solana. If it can't hold 34, it's going to 30. And if it can't hold 30, boy. That's going to get gnarly real quick. And you're talking about $21, $19, and $17. And there's nothing you can do about it or I can do about it. I have some Solana stuck on Voyager and I can't get it off. What are you going to do about that shit? You're not going to do nothing about it. That's what. So Solana is also going to be a no for me. PTIX. PTIX. Progenic Therapeutics. Hey, thank you, Electric Ken. Looky here, we see a traditional over-the-counter stock that is broken trend. It's broken trend, and look at that. Hey, hey, broken trend and aiming for the 200 moving average. Look at you go, you heifer. Already broken through R3. What does the weekly look like here? S1 is way up here at 106. My goodness. Is there a solid possibility we could get the 106 here? Let's dig a little deeper, shall we? Let's take all this back off. Let's pull us some fibs here, shall we? See if we can find anything that lines up with 106. And if we can't, that's fine. But, oh, shit, it does. Looky there. My goodness. Electric Ken. Thank you, brother. That's 111. 102, which is near 106. I got confluence right there, brother. If it can get past this little bitty spot of resistance right here, you got more over here in these old section where it barely had any trading volume but did fall before. So that makes sense. $1 lines up. $1 to 106 lines up on PTIX. I'm circling that one. Thank you, brother. TRB. All right. Let's have a look at TRB. It's performed extremely well. Look at that. One of the few that have broken the major downtrend line. Look at that thing go. Hot almighty. You had two of them that it broke. Also broke this one. This is what I wanted to see other assets do that quite simply not many did. And TRB is one of them here. Uh, performed extremely well. 
Um, now you do have a lower high here. I'm sorry, a lower low here. You haven't had a chance to make a lower high yet. And you have fallen below the AEMA. Your moving averages all do line up now. Um, I guess the pivots are all gone. No, it's stuck in between R2 and R3. Okay. Needs to break 42.6 in order to show me some more power here. If it can't break below 42.6 and it falls below 35.8, then you're going to get a back test of this trend line right here, which is roughly where the 50 moving average is, around 28, 29, 30 bucks. Uh, I expect TRB to fade back a little bit more. It's not a sale yet, though, if I'm being honest. All right, let's go to deck screener and see if we can't find Sphere. I guess this is it, 480,000 in volume, which is nothing. These are all such low caps. All right, $480,000 is nothing, you know what I'm saying? All right, so uh, what do I see? I see a triple top, one here, one here, one here. Um, you are currently holding support um, right about here, but it's getting hairy. Um, if this doesn't improve drastically, um, you're going to fall under resistance. You fall under resistance and this thing may hit that same death spiral that every single other thing like this has done. Um, be careful. How about that? It's looking sideways or down to me. In fact, you could say that it's been doing this for a while. Okay. So, um, I don't have any of this and I'm not going to buy any of this because I don't trust it. Almost everything on deck screener is hardly trustworthy. So I'm going to shy away from this one. Dot. Let's look at dot. Polka dot. All right. Similar situation. By the way, if you haven't seen the, the newest, um, oh shit, the one with Harley Quinn in it. The newest one has the polka dot man, which is pretty fucking funny. His superpower is he has polka dots and he has a virus or whatever and he erupts in polka dots. It's pretty funny. He gets killed. Suicide Squad, the newest Suicide Squad. Uh, it's been out for a while. It's just funny that a dude with polka dots is his superpower. It's hilarious. Uh, and he's, he's angry with his mom all the time. It's funny as hell. Anyway, polka dots got a little bit of a head and shoulders also bearing out right here on the small time frame. Not great. The last time this happened, you had a hard capitulation. It kind of looks like that's what's coming again. It's not a buy. It's under trend. It's under another trend. Goodness gracious, folks. It is under the pivot. It's is just about as short as it gets for dot. No, thank you. CRV. All right, CRV. Now, let's pull this. That's just an arrow that I've got pointing. I see under the pivot, I see under resistance. That's not great. Let's start there and say that's not great. Not a great, not a great way to kick off the show there. Um, you are over the 100 moving average, but you're stuck in between the 100 and the 50. And you're over the 20, over the 8, but under the 21. Tough spot. This looks down or sideways just based on the fact that it's kind of caught here. Um, it's stuck under the pivot. It's stuck under resistance. It's under the 200. It's under the 50. It's under the 21. A lot of stuff to go through here. I don't immediately get the sense that it's going to move up through that very drastically or quickly. Ichimoku cloud, it has fallen into the cloud. You've got a red cloud. You've got base under. You've got conversion under baseline. You've got lag under the candles. The only thing you have left is the candles inside the cloud. You've got one out of four check marks on the Ichimoku cloud. I don't like the aspects of that for uh, CRV. It's also fallen out of the bear flag that it formed. What do I mean by the bear flag? Here you go. Formed this up real nicely. And then fell out. Jogged sideways and dropped. From here, we formed an extra trend line, haven't we? Can't see what I mean? Well, how about I draw it for you? This has formed another downtrend. Not a very sharp one yet, but a downtrend nonetheless. Not an uptrend anymore. So... We must treat it as such and do not long until you cross certain barriers. In fact, 143 to 145 here seems like a tough barrier. You probably call that 150. That seems like a tough barrier for CRV. And uh, I'm not going to bother with it until I get more over resistance and turn it into support. Flip resistance into support. It's a much better looking chart then. 
Um, just joined the Discord finally. Thanks, Keith, for that. Thank, thank you for what you do. Finally saying, hey, what's up, Christian? Good to see you, brother. Thank you for joining. Um, Ashley says, Solana. We just did Solana. Looks bad to me, Ashley. Sorry. I wish it looked better. It doesn't. I have some Solana stuck on Voyager, and I can't do anything about it. It's probably going to drop in value, and I'm just going to have to eat it. Just the way it is, right? Nothing you can do about it. 96 people on, 73 likes. Y'all go hit like. More likes we get. Let's see if we can break 100 people on and 100 likes. That would be awesome. This is a, a good stuff. I like to see people coming on here and getting into it. Uh, TRB to 42, then 28 is my plan. Got short set up there. Okay, cool. I'm with it. Um, Gold Champ says, thank you, thank you. NVIDIA gap field. Yes, it did. You know what, Terry? We were talking about that on the uh, Zoom. And damn if that bitch didn't fill uh, feel, uh, the, the gap the very next day, and the option would have been fine. That $9 option that we were talking about would have been perfectly fine because it, it filled up that price the very next day, which is insane that we were talking about that happen. I love it when that happens. Um, let's see. Would you short sell? Would you short the sell token? Those short squeeze campaigns seem to be making the price a lot of struggle. Um, no, I'm not going to touch sell Celsius token. I'm not going to touch it because uh, I 100% don't trust it. Don't trust it. It's clear that they're manipulating the coin. That's their last ditch effort to make some money back. I think they already made some. I think they've started taking profits. I don't think it's a short squeeze. I think uh, they have the ability to manipulate that one and they're going to continue to do so. And as such, I'm not touching it. Um, Algo shows three hills in a gooseneck. Definitely going to drop. This is the same setup we saw in May 2021. <laughs> Y'all are ruthless with the goosenecks, bro. That's a long story and I don't want to get into it and trash anybody because I'm trying to be bigger than that. But damn. All right. <laughs> Oh, God. He said, Frank, I was one. Don't y'all remember when people were happy build, buying Algo at a dollar? I remember that shit, dude. Second option would have paid big time. You're damn right it would have, dude. Um, did I miss anybody else? No, I didn't. All right. So let's move on down the list here uh, to SH, which was Scott Hoyleman. He brought this up. It's index. ProShare shorts. Yep. All right. So ProShare S&P 500 shorts here have fallen off. And people have went long on a lot of stuff is what you're seeing here. This index is selling shorts. Um, as you see, they fell off pretty hard for years and years and years and years and years. You started to see an increase in shorts. You're seeing them drop. Is this going to hold support right here and potentially bounce up? Um, all the indicators have turned back the other direction. So as soon as that trend breaks, possibly you're going to see more shorts start coming in on the S&P 500. That's the point of SH. It is a short index. It shows you the shorts. Pretty darn cool, actually. All right, Adam. Uh, USD. 96 people on, bro. Four more. Let's go. Four more people, and we got 100. All right, so Adam is a little bit tricky here, man. This thing had broken the bear flag down, right? You argue how you want to draw this. Whatever. I don't really care. It broke the bear flag down. And damn, that bitch didn't jump back in it. Look at that. Broke it and then jumped back in it. Ain't that ain't that something? You don't see that happen a lot. Unless they yeah, actually should have drawn it like this. And it's just ranging back and forth and hasn't totally failed yet. If that's the case, and it's just an upward, upward regression channel here, it's doing pretty darn well, isn't it? That same thing, though. It's already hit the top of that channel, and I expect it to fall. I can't think that one asset like Adam rises above the rest during the middle of a bear market. <sighs> At the same time, we can't argue with the chart, can we? So let's pull a fib on this here. Go from all-time high down to the bottom. You see that it's actually broken the 382 fib. It's got two candles over it, which is pretty darn impressive. Is there a chance this runs to $16? Man, I hate to call that out like that, but yeah, there's a possibility this runs up here to the 200 moving average and hits 16 bucks. If not, and it falls below 1240, if it falls below 1240, there's a solid possibility it could range back down to nine bucks, and that would be bearish. I don't think that's happened yet. I, mean, I don't think that's going to happen yet. You got good support down there, the 50 moving average, which is with right there where that green line is. It's held that pretty darn well. See that 50 day moving average right there turning up? All the moving averages are balling up. This tends to be good. Same time, it could just jog sideways for a really, really, really long time. So I'm not long-term bullish on this because I don't think there's a whole lot of meat on the bone just yet. Now, 
it does still look good. And I can't deny it. It's amazing what it's done. Keep an eye out, though. If everything looks bad and then one or two look good, that's usually a, a red flag to me. Link. Let's have a look at Link. I haven't looked at this one in a while. Uh, Link is a big fat no. Um, it's doing hardly nothing, dancing around here on um, resistance, trying to break resistance, but it can't. If this can't break resistance, we're coming back down to $4.40. Link was a hell of a performer in the previous bull market. But guess what? We ain't in a bull market no more, are we? Nope. Getting hammered in this bear market. Crushed, as a matter of fact. If that's the case, one must play it smart. I don't like the look of this chart. No, thank you. It's under all the moving averages. It is holding this little mini trend line right here, but that's the last hope. That's the last gasp. That's Meek Mill going to court for the 30th time right there. It don't look good. Hex. Oh, we didn't make nine. We didn't make a hundred. We're down to eighty-nine. Womp, womp, womp. It's all good, bro. Um, Hex dancing around with the one hundred has fifty-day moving average support. Can it hold it? There's also a three eighty-two line in the way. If it can't get over this, it's going to fail that fifty-day moving average like many other ones have done, and drop down to three cents, and then potentially two and a half cents. That's gnarly if it does that because Hex could continue to fall down farther and farther and farther and go to an abysmal pit of death here. And that would be uh, one and a half cent, one point point one three cent, and uh, point oh one cent flat, which would be really, really bad. But that would line up with everything else having a hard capitulation. I don't think Bitcoin would go straight to ten thousand. By the way, I think there would be stopping points around seventeen thousand, fourteen thousand, twelve thousand, and then ten thousand. It's a lot of stopping points, isn't it? Yes. I don't think it'll stay down there long. Also, if it does go down there. Just my thought process. Uh, we'll see. Roar. All right. Roar token. Alphadex. Uh, it's going to be a no here for me on this one. This thing has absolutely shown me nothing at all. And until this improves, it's a no. I don't even want to think about it. It looks too bad to bother with. Luna C. Um... KuCoin, Terra Classic. Yeah, so we've got a nice green candle on this thing, but I'm not touching it with a 10-foot pole. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you, okay? I'm not not following it, not doing it again, all right? Um, or it's the other way around. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Whatever. I just did the George Bush, didn't I, which is hilarious. You fool me, you can't get fooled again. I'm not falling for that on lunacy, not touching it. No, thank you. There's no reason at all to bother with it. Um, there may be money to be made on it, but I don't want to be that guy who gets stuck in something that looks horrible. Um, thank you for the, Frank, I'm feeling bullish on my ability to learn, and thanks, you guys. Really love the community. Positive space during turbulent times. Absolutely, Christian. There's no reason to not be. We can come together and make better decisions. That's the whole point in this. That's the whole point reason we come on here and do this. I give this information out on YouTube for free because I want people to learn. I want people to do this together. The more people we have doing this together, the smarter we are as a collective group, the smarter moves we make. And if we make smarter moves, more people will make smarter moves. And we can all get smarter together and create a more mature space where everybody can make more money. I don't see how that's a bad thing. I really, really don't see how that's a bad thing. There are going to be speed bumps. There are going to be people who impede your progress. There are people who on Twitter right now saying random dumb things that they don't know what they're talking about. They've done nothing but be degenerates and throw tons and tons and tons of money around. Made good money doing it, by the way, but they did it in a sleazy way, right? Kind of like Tupac says, I made a G today, but I made it in a sleazy way, selling crack to the kids. I got to get paid. Well, hey, I guess that's the way it is. No, thank you, not for me. I'd rather not do that. I realize that there's a more mature way of investing, and I'm going to be that more mature way. This is the grown-up space, all right? I know there are other YouTubers that like to say that. This is the grown-up space over here. I don't say it that way. We, we're grown folks over here. We can make grown folk decisions. We should make grown folk decisions. Let's not do anything hasty or anything dumb. Um, don't feel like any questions are dumb. we all here to help you and everyone else in the group. We all try to learn something new every day. Welcome to the Assassins. Thank you, Ken. Um, China Matt says VD 
USD. Thank you, China Matt. Welcome back, by the way, Matt. Love having Matt around. He's one of the smartest people I know. And I like to try to surround myself with the smartest people I can. That dude has information falling out of him like sweat. And uh, I want to get all of it that I can. I love it when people who are smart talk around me. Still under this trend line. I don't like that. I do like the 821 cross, but I bet you this thing hits that 200 and fades. What do you think? This gives me a spooky feeling watching that happen. It's got a lot of low volume, too. <sighs> Could this be worth a try? Yeah. But, man, everything looks really turbulent. And I don't want to be a sucker to get stuck in this. You know what I mean? Gosh, it's still under trend. I can't do it yet. I know what you're saying. But, man, I just need it, I need it, I need it to improve a little bit more. Uh, it is breaking over the cloud, too. Shit. Can't deny that. Let's see it break the trend. If it breaks the trend, we can talk. Let me write this down. Okay, I'll write this one down, and I'll check on this one some more and put this on the list to watch more because I I can't deny that that chart looks better than most. My ass bone is killing me. Hang on a second. Gosh. Sitting in this chair too long makes my butt hurt, y'all. Sorry. Um, Jeremy Monroe, he just refobbied his expression. He just he just rebified his expression, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> Get over the weekly twenty one. Yes, thank you, China Matt. Let's look at that too. Like the way you think, sir. Ah, it's stuck. It's right there in the wait a minute zone, isn't it? And it's in bearish times like this under the trend lines. I say this all the time. Eight twenty one cross is what I want to see first. Give me an eight twenty one cross and we can talk turkey. But just getting over the eight EMA during a bear market, not quite good enough for me. I want to see that thing hop over the bear market line which is that big yellow line, and improve. If it can do that, man, okay, now we're cooking with grease. But until then, I got to shy away. Um, BLZ, please, got you. Let's look at Blue Zell. That'll probably be the last one. All right. Put on a daily here. Blue Zell smacked the 200 and the trend line twice. Expect fade from here. Ton of sell pressure on the top of these wicks. Blue Zell made a really solid move. Can't deny that, but it's stuck under that 200-day moving average. One of the few who did this. Very impressive move. If there's meat on the bone here, be very careful because every indicator is already super high. Better get your profits when you can. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but this is one of the few that's done well. Play it smart. Um, Matt with the one and done. Dude's insane. <laughs> All right, so look. That's been roughly two hours. We had a Really solid stream, I think. Again, anyone who needs help, if you need someone to talk to or you're having a hard time, please message me. I'll try to get to you and talk to you if I can. There's nothing worth doing anything stupid over. Things are about to get really turbulent. September's probably going to be bad. I'm going to be here no matter what. I'll be doing these live streams no matter what. If I'm here, you can be here, okay? You've not lost as much money as me before. You've not lived through what I've lived through either. It can get worse, I promise it can get worse than losing a little bit of money. I promise. We can go through a big whole long spiel about what I've been through. It's not the point. The point is there's people to talk to. Don't do anything dumb. Thank you all for coming and hanging out. This is awesome to me. I hope everyone picked up some information. I want to thank you all one more time for coming in here this late. I know it's late streams that go till midnight. We're going to try to improve the times. Please understand I got a family, okay? They like the 7 o'clock hangout time. Also, we have ball practices all the time. It's hard to do 7 o'clock streams, man. It just is. So we'll work on that. Either way, we'll be back Tuesday with another live stream. We'll have Zoom calls over in the Unlimited chat after this and before and after chats on Tuesdays as well. Thank you. See you all on the next stream. Y'all be good. Till then, leave you with the words of the late, great, notorious B.I.G. Whoops. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. I appreciate that shit. Thank you. See y'all good. I'll be later. Peace.